Halo 3 Anniversary, what well, could have been. Now for those who don't know what I'm talking about, we're going to have to do a little bit of backtracing here to around 2017. It was been around 10 years, getting close to that, since Halo 3 officially released. And there was a lot of speculation about whether or not we'd be getting a Halo 3 Anniversary. Because up to that point, we had gone a Halo Anniversary 10 years after the game launched. So if Halo Combat Evolved, we saw an anniversary edition 10 years after its official release. And the same rules applied to Halo 2. We saw a release of Halo 2 anniversaries for 10 years after its launch as well. And so obviously people came to the natural conclusion that, oh, they're going to do the same thing for Halo 3. And it was getting close enough to the point where it was probably six months away from Halo 3's 10th anniversary. And so there was a lot of speculation about whether or not we're going to see a Halo 3 anniversary. And unfortunately, that date came and passed and nothing happened. We didn't see a Halo 3 anniversary, not much of anything really notable happened for Halo 3. To be fair, a smaller group of people said, oh, maybe they're waiting for Halo 3 ODST's 10th anniversary, you know, so they can do both at once, because up to that point, they're going to have to start making a lot more anniversaries. And so maybe to keep it simpler, they want to put Halo 3 and ODST as one anniversary. And then Halo 3's ODST's anniversary came and passed and nothing happened. And then Halo Reach's 10th anniversary happened. Nothing. No anniversary. And so you might be asking, why do I believe where you're going to get a Halo 3 anniversary now? I mean, it's missed the mark. It's only consistent rule being 10 years after it launched it's missed that window so why is it going should we expect one and i'm going to explain why now it is true that one of the rules for halo anniversary was that it released 10 years after its original but obviously because halo 3 odst and reach have all reached their 10th anniversary and nothing happened it has became very, very obvious that that is no longer a rule as it has been broken three out of five times. So with that rule out of the way, what else is a consistent rule? The only other consistent rule I can think of is that we've seen one anniversary with each console generation. Obviously, we didn't see one with the original Xbox because that's when the games were released. Then with the Halo Xbox 360, we saw a Halo 1 anniversary. And then the Xbox One came out and we saw Halo 2 Anniversary. So one of my natural conclusions would be now we've got the Xbox Series X and S console generation. So it makes sense that we'd see a Halo 3 Anniversary. But why would this rule make sense? Well, let's look at it. To explain, I'm going to have to do a bit of technical talking, but I'll try and keep it simple enough. Halo Anniversary titles are, require a lot of processing power. You've got the base game running, which processing power wise can use when it's let's imagine we're doing halo 2 anniversary on the xbox one and that requires a lot of processing power one it needs to process the original game and then it's got to run it at 1080 60 fps so that may use anywhere to from five to ten percent of the xbox one's resources and then i have that other 90 percent to use for halo 2 anniversary to make that look as good as they can graphically and then if we put try to create a Halo 3 anniversary, it's an Xbox 360 title while the original Halo 2 is an OG Xbox title. So it is going to be generally speaking harder to run because it's also having to attempt 1080p 60fps. And obviously anyone could tell you that Halo 3 is more intensive to run than Halo 2 because the original Halo 2 ran on an Xbox One with that limit. Halo 3 ran on the Xbox 360 which had which was a more powerful machine. And obviously because it's running on the Xbox One, it's got a lot more headroom. But even then, Halo 3 is using more resources as a base. And so what that would lead, it would normally take up around, uh, let's just go for baseline figure of 10 to 20%. Now if we go with its, its extremes with Halo 2 using 10% of processing power and Halo 3 using 20, you'll notice a thing. That extra headroom that's been left, it is significantly less for Halo 3 than it is with Halo 2. Meaning that if you were to even attempt to create an anniversary for Halo 3 on the Xbox One, you're having to compete with Halo 2 Anniversary. And unfortunately, when it comes to that, a Halo 3 Anniversary would have less processing power for the Anniversary graphics. 
And so what would end up happening is you'd end up getting a graphically inferior version. And that'd be the main reason why we didn't see a Halo 3 anniversary. You could not, simply put, you could not have a graphically superior experience to Halo 2 anniversary without either lowering, lowering the resolution which wouldn't create a very pleasant experience or either lowering the, lowering the frame rate, which would probably have an even, give players an even worse experience. And so that's when you come to the conclusion that it would only work if they had to do Halo Anniversary or Halo 3 Anniversary on the next console generation. Because Halo 2 Anniversary will go uses only 20% of the Xbox Series X's processing power. And based off that, Halo 3 would, its base Halo 3 would probably only use 5% of the Xbox Series X's processing power, which means they have 95% to use for Anniversary. So obviously when it comes to that, they're going to have a lot more headroom to create a very graphically superior experience. And so that's why I believe we should be getting one this console generation. As for a date, I'm not entirely sure. The consistent rule was 10 years, but now that it's been broken, I'm not entirely sure what year they'd set it to. They could attempt 20 years after the original Halo release, but that's very close to when people believe Halo Infinite's going to release. So my question is, what other dates could they have? Well, it could be 15 years after Halo 3 release, which would leave its release date being 2022, which isn't too far off. It's about two years now at this point. Other than that, it could be 20 years, but I believe at that point we're going to be reaching the end of the this current xbox series x and s console generation so i believe it'd be less likely then but still possible at the end of the day i don't have a clear date but we should expect one this console generation i do believe that when we get this halo 3 anniversary it is going to include halo 3 odst because if it didn't the next console generation would have to be dedicated for a halo 3 odst anniversary and then an odst then Reach, and then Halo 4, and that just would take way too long for them games to get anniversaries. So if they can do Kill Two Birds with One Stone, I believe that's what they're going to do. They're going to get a Halo 3 anniversary and have ODST included with it. Because they are very similar games that were built on the same hardware, very graphically speaking, very similar sets. And so they'll try and kill two birds with one stone and release both. So maybe we'll see it 15 years after... Ha Halo 3 OST release, so that would leave it being around 2024, which is a reasonable enough date to expect a game to release in that console generation. Another reason they might do it is because, well, since the Halo Infinite reveal, a lot of people have been complaining about the graphics, and unfortunately I don't believe Halo Infinite is going to look incredibly amazing, because it is a cross-gen title. Halo Infinite needs to run on both Xbox One consoles and the Xbox Series X. So unfortunately, there's only so much you can do to make the graphics look good. But what they could do is use Halo 3 Anniversary as a graphic showcase to show what the Xbox Series X and S are capable of. Because to think of it simply, they've already got a base game, being Halo 3. So all they need to do is hire a team with enough knowledge to create a engine on top of that to just facilitate better graphics. And so they've got a game with gameplay, story, all of that. All they need to do is create better graphics and redo the cutscenes to create a very graphically appealing version. And instead of build it from the ground up with the Xbox Series X and S in mind, they're going to be able to create a very graphically impressive so showcase. Whether that's through ray tracing or just old fashioned rendering, they can make a very visually impressive showcase. Because up to this point, the Xbox Series X doesn't have a graphically impressive game to pit up against the PlayStation 5. Like with the PlayStation 5, you've got games like Demon Souls and the best graphically looking game on the Xbox Series X is, well, it doesn't really have one. And so they could use Halo 3 Anniversary as an opportunity to show the graphics capability of the Xbox Series X because it'd be built from the ground up with that in mind, unlike Halo Infinite, which is a cross-gen title. So I think at the end of the day, we should expect a Halo 3 anniversary. I don't think 3 for 3 has given up on doing anniversaries. I just think the reasoning as to why we hadn't seen one in about 8 years is simply just put because they're not willing to release two anniversaries on one console generation as it just wouldn't be able to create a better experience. 
at least compared to its previous anniversary. And so with that, we've come to my conclusion. I'd like to thank you for watching the video. If you want to help me out, you can simply just like the video. And if you want to help me out just that bit more, you can also subscribe and then get notified whenever I upload. Apart from that, I'd like to thank you. I'll see you later.